If, however, the ownership of the media is in the hands of someone who has several other businesses, it stands to reason that the, news, the media will be used in order to further the commercial interests of that corporate group in the non-media sectors as well. So that's a different set of problems. What I'm saying is that while <clears throat> journalists are apprehensive because of the kind of remarks that political leaders have been making about the media, uh, and we've seen that across the board, we have seen um, the INB minister speak about uh, in very harsh terms about the media. We saw the leader of a newly arrived political party on the scene, Mr. Kejriwal, suddenly beginning to, to attack the media and to speak about corporate control of the media. When some of us asked him, saying that, how is it that when media went gaga about your rise, you never thought of questioning the media's ownership, but why do you so now? And of course, there is no, no immediate answer. But this is true, really, of wanting to seriously look at the kind of control, the kind of ownership, what the ownership patterns are. And therefore, one way out, I think, would be for media organizations to be completely transparent about their ownership patterns. I think it's important that we know who exactly owns the, the means of production, to speak, of the media. And this could help us understand the kind of constraints, the kinds of challenges the journalists working with organizations uh, they face. But on the other hand, we also need to look at some other issues which I have not really seen discussed in the press. The kind of laws that govern media functioning date from the middle of the 19th century. There are at least four such laws. If you're fortunate to have Adolf Nigam with us, who I hope will tell us a little bit more. But there are a certain number of laws which continue to, to the one of them has been amended in 1957, but that amendment really amounts to nothing because those four laws are hampering us. India is the one country where the constitution does not guarantee the freedom of the press. Freedom of expression comes under Article 19, and uh, as with everything else, Article 19 itself is subjected to a certain number of restrictions. But otherwise, unlike the American Constitution, which has the, second, the amendment protecting or guaranteeing the freedom of the press, we don't have that. Whether we should have it or not is a separate question, but I think we need to take a look at a whole bundle of arcane laws, and those laws have to be amended, etc. Finally comes the question of journalists themselves, and I'm going to, to really stop here. Journalists themselves, unlike us, we had no journalism schools when we started. We went to universities, we acquired degrees, and then we came to the profession. Um, I, I began my career in, in a Pune newspaper called the Pune Herald when I was 16 years old. I was the youngest member of the staff, and I was very handsomely paid then. 50 rupees a month, and that took care of all my all my needs. Um, today, of course, that figure has gone up by at least by at least 100 times, and uh, I think it's all to the good. I think journalists need to be paid well, etc. But I think it's time also that journalists reflected on their own um, metiers, would speak on their own profession, and that degree of reflection has to go on uh, with great consistency and great honesty. Very often we are told that the, the reporting itself is factually incorrect, incomplete, or biased. <coughs> Earlier we, we always said that the reporting should be as factual as possible and opinion can be free. But now increasingly you find that in the reporting itself you get a lot of opinion that's, that's expressed. Right. So one of the areas I think where we should look at carefully, some are extremely well known and they criticize, I think, the whole phenomenon of paid news, I think, is sufficiently discussed. Uh, the very fact of, of that the phenomenon came to light at all, I think, does no honor whatsoever to the, to the field of journalism and to, and to journalists. Uh, there have been, of course, talk, a great deal of talk about how uh, individual journalists can be, can be purchased to write stories and so on. I think that can be treated with honesty. I know of certain cases which, uh, you will pardon me, I will not name, 
but where the owners have said, why should the journalists get the bribes? Why not the owners get them directly? So they have had a lot of restrictions from within the organization because the Maliks now prefer to deal directly with whoever wants to buy space or time on, on uh, television. So I think there is room, therefore, for all sides to come together to look at the ownership patterns, to look at the laws, current legislation, rules, uh, regulating, quote unquote, the media. It's time also that there is a de fair degree of understanding between the media and those that media cover. And the understanding is to be done is what constitutes, as far as the media is concerned, professional rectitude, professional correctness. And I think professional correctness is something where we all have to, to abide by. There are certain set standards of, of honesty, of truthfulness, of balance, etc., which we mentioned. And as far as opinion is concerned, I think that should leave anyone completely free. My last point really is that from time to time, I find a lot of political leaders also in government particularly want to bring in, in some way or the other, some kind of state control over the media. And to them, I would merely say that a free media can be good, can be bad, can be indifferent. But a controlled media is always bad. I began by telling you an anecdote, and we end with a small one. This one is not a, a true story, but it's, a, it's an anecdote I love, because uh, I found it in a play written by a British playwright called Tom Stoppard. And in the play, there is a coup that takes place in an African country. <coughs> the military has taken over, and the British correspondent goes and meets the President General. And one of the questions he asks is, Mr. President General, sir, is the press in your country free? And the President General thinks for a moment and says, well, the press in my country is relatively free. That is to say, it is owned by my relatives. Thank you very much. <laughs>